Have you ever thought about what it takes to stand up and stand out online in your business, in your community, in your family, in your work? Well, you do have to stand up in order to stand out. And today we have three experts who are chomping at the bit, ready to take you step by step through the process of standing out and standing up. So what I'd like to do is have you say hi to them or have them say hi to you. <laughs> hi, Celeste. Hi, this is so great to be here. My name is Celeste Camps. My company is Empowerment Through Movement. I am a speaker and coach from Forest Hills, New York. You can find me at CelesteCamps.com. Great to have you, Celeste. And hi, Vivian. Hi, everyone. I am Vivian Ram. I am a co-owner, STEM coach, as well as a STEM advocate. I am at VivianRam.com in the Atlanta metro area, and I am excited to be here today. Uh, we're excited to have you and welcome Dominique. Hello there. This is Dominique Hart, visual brand strategist and founder and CEO of Dynamic Endeavors. You can find me at DominiqueHart.com. Great to have all of you here. And we have an important topic, which I think the three of you really can bring to light for us. And that is how to help our viewers stand out and then, well, stand up so that then they can stand out and what they need to do to stand out. So Celeste, I thought we'd start with you with the stand up part. How, what do people need to know? How can they banish their self doubt? It's actually very easy. You pay attention to how your body is holding yourself. Are your shoulders back? Is your head lifted? Are you smiling? Believe it or not, just putting ourselves in a confident pose makes our mind follow along. It, we have a hard time with that negative voice in our head that's just constantly wanting to rake ourselves over the coals. And yet I find if I put my body in a confident pose, that little voice says, oh, we're being confident now. All right, let's do this. And it's a very empowering feeling. And it also gives you a sense of presence. When you walk into a room, people notice that. And it's very infectious, especially when you smile. And I see it in your body, number one. Number two, I took a step back. It made me conscious. And I said, oh, let me sit up just a little bit taller. And <laughs> it took my self-confidence up. And it also raised, uh, lowered my uh, feeling of worry, of self-doubt mm -hmm. or worry. So that was like, wow, what a simple, like I could have had a V8 moment, <laughs> right, <laughs> to do yeah. that. And um, so that's a brilliant idea for just generating self confidence because once you do that then you can stand out and Vivian I know you help people especially the younger generation of women stand out so what uh, what can w young women do once they start thinking about their self-confidence but then they want to gain a competitive advantage what do you recommend they do to stand out so uh, I think coding is the way of the future I mean there is almost nothing out there that doesn't have coding as part of it so especially for young girls, I think learning a coding skill and learning it early gives you that competitive advantage that takes you far into your adulthood. Um, also, I think for young entrepreneurs, you spend a lot of time, especially when you're just starting a business, right? Long hours trying to figure things out. So making sure that you have a business that aligns with your passion and purpose so that you're not just working, you're working, doing something that you're passionate about. So when you say coding, you mean like per computer programming, right? Yes, computer programming. You know, for our kids, we call ninjas. We say coding, but yes, computer programming. So when, when a young person thinks about like, why should I do this? And you're like, I don't want to go into computer programming or coding. Um, what would you say back to them? You know, I say it's not like my mom and dad's coding, right? I remember in high school, they had the big machines. And so you would code and it was horrible. And I remember thinking I would never do anything with this. Isn't life funny? Well, now coding involves, you can be a game developer, right? You can create apps. There's so many fun things that you can do with coding. So now that we really just try to open up kids to the opportunities that are out there that they may not have even considered. Cool. So it could be a career path, but it doesn't have to be. Number one, it's a skill set to have that can uh, leverage you for life. You can leverage for life, right? Because it also, I know when I took even programming back in the day when it was that 
big ugly thing (laughs) it makes you think in a certain way it builds your thinking skills so you can solve problems um so i think there's a bigger case there would you agree for you know learning a skill that gives you a competitive advantage but it also gives you the skill of how to think through problem solving a hundred percent so not just problem solving critical thinking logic math these are all those extra skills that you pick up with coding which is wonderful right these are the same skills they need when they're preparing for the acts and sats so you know now when kids have a question what do they do they go to siri right they go to alexa so they get to use that left side of the brain that oh what you know that doesn't just get used all the time brilliant oh i love it okay great and dominique i want to ask you as someone who works with businesses you know, you've got your, now you've got some confidence in you based on what Celeste was talking about. Maybe you have some critical thinking skills like uh, Vivian was talking about, but now we have a business. We actually have to make it stand out and it's a noisy world out there. So what do you advise? Oh, I love the fact that we're even talking about standing up and standing out because that's everything that visual branding is about. And without that, you're really missing that dynamic factor to really attract people to your business. And that's something that I really want people to know about this virtual world or even creating experiences offline is that when it comes to visual branding, it shouldn't be something that's put off. It should be something that's on the forefront because that's a very thing that people are going to see that's going to want to them to come into your world and learn more about you and buy from you and increase your ROI. It's really important. Yeah. And so, you know, it's almost like a a puzzle to figure out what is the visual that would match my brand, right? So where could people start to think about changing up their visual brand to stand out? Yeah, I I definitely, and and I kind of touched on this a little bit, but there's an experience to be had when it comes to your visual brand. So definitely start there, right? Not only who you are, especially if you're a personal brand, and I know everyone has those questions between a personal brand and a corporate brand, which one should I, what direction should I go? I'm getting some head nods, right? (laughs) And so that's really, really important, but definitely think about what is the experience that I want to be uh, created in my market? What's the experience that I want to be known? for and then create from there. And once you do that, and once you get really in tune with that um, and really take a moment to decipher what that is, whoever you are working with on your creative team will be better able, they'll be better able to understand you better because your words are now speaking in a way where you couldn't before because you didn't take the time to really think and imagine what that experience will look like in your world. And they say a picture's worth a thousand words. So bring the words to that creative person. Let them amplify your message through visual because so many people want to put so many words either on a PowerPoint slide or on a on a web page. But if you have the right image, it'll bring forth. I, I get what you're saying. It's so powerful, um, the visuals. Thank you. This is like meaty. We are now ready to be confident, have the critical thinking skills, have the 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 um, logic behind us, and then the wisdom to bring it out there in a visual way. Wow. Ooh, power team you are, you three are. So let's learn a little bit more about each of you because I want to know where your superpowers come from and who you help (laughs) with them. So tell me, um, Celeste, who do you work with? What do you do for them? What are you most excited about with that? I mostly work with women, though I have yet to do a presentation where there weren't men in the audience. And I'm always pleasantly surprised when they come up and tell me how much they got out of it. So I work with a lot of women who want to have a voice to their message, and yet they find themselves feeling awkward or their mind is talking them out of it. And they're having that crisis of maybe I just give all of this up. And it's very easy. I go over to them what it is they're trying to do, what is their passion. And I explain to them that everybody needs to know your message. Uh, You know, if you're passionate about it, trust me, even if somebody didn't think about that before, just your enthusiasm will give them something else to learn and grow from. So it's important that we find our voice. And many times it is, it's just a matter of be prepared. Don't try to go out there and wing it. There's no point in that. Everybody knows when you're just trying to get through something without any real preparation. But once you've put the work in 
and you know how your story is going to go and everything is organized, the next step is to practice it, not to the wall, but to people. Yeah, that's how we get our feedback. I always say the analogy of think about a really bad date you went on and you tell your, your best friend and it takes you 20 minutes. But by the time you've told your 10th friend about that bad date, you've got a solid five minutes and you've taken out everything that didn't move the story along. You know what is funny and what gets to the heart of the matter and you've got a story for life. And once I explain that and they put that message together, and I'm able to show them, okay, I want you to walk into that room with the confidence and energy. So the point when you get in front of everybody, it's almost like you explode. And it's, there's something very powering of believing that there is a bright spotlight on you and that people are there not to judge you, but to hear what you have to say and enjoy you because people think we're being so critical of each other and we're not, we just, we want the information and we, want to hear it, especially if you want to tell it. It's beautiful. How did you get into this work? Oh, I actually, um, this was a long journey for me because I had a terrible shyness. I had such uh, low self-esteem and insecurity that it was debilitating. And I, I really thought I wasn't going to have much of a future personal or business, but it was dancing that saved me. I always loved to dance. That's the only time I felt comfortable in my skin. And I realized when I started teaching other women to dance, so you have to understand, I did professional belly dancing <laughs> for many, many years. But what I didn't realize is that that confidence I felt on stage started creeping into my everyday life. But I didn't put it together and start until I was teaching other women to dance. And then the transformation, they would go from standing like statues, explaining to me why their hips didn't move. When I said, no, this is very natural. And when I got them to relax and breathe and move into the positions, oh my gosh, once they got to that sexy pose, they were like, oh, I'm so sexy. I'm really quite beautiful. And they couldn't believe how quickly their minds changed from feeling awkward to feeling sexy and beautiful. And I realized, oh, I put their bodies in a sexy pose. That is how I'm getting through my life. I am walking through with the confidence that I have on stage. And I started doing a lot of research and there is a lot of science to it. And there is such a, a great body mind connection that I love sharing it because I find we have these tools and they're there for us whenever we need that self-esteem boost. And that's what I like to show everybody. Beautiful. Because I know how much it's helped me. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrific. Thank you so much for teaching people how to stand out and get confident in their bodies. And so, yeah. Vivian, tell us about you. And I know the work you do with your coding ninjas. Who, who do you work with? What do you do? How do people get involved? So Code Ninjas, we teach kids to code. Um, our main audience are kids between the ages of 5 to 14. Um, it's a great program because we teach them the code by helping them develop their own video game. And so kids are all familiar with karate, right? So it's a nine level belt system and they learn things like JavaScript and Lua and Unity. And so most of the video games that are out there are actually built in Unity. And they're familiar with Lua because they played Angry Birds or Roblox, right? With the kids they're familiar with. So they love that through our program, they get to build skills that they can develop their own game that will go in the app store. That's how they complete our program. And so the thing that excites me about our program is that they are able to learn a skill that not just takes them into adulthood, but they've created a product that follows them forever. So imagine being eight or 10 years old, you've developed a game and you can say to your friends, hey, you can play my game in an app store, right? They start to believe that they're limitless. And so giving kids that opportunity, that truly is, is, is the best part. Do you have a, a quick story about how some kid, what happened when they, what, where they were before and what happened to them when they went through your program? Yes. So it, it's funny. We have a, one of our young ninjas is what we call our, our students. They were working on this particular code. And so it took them about four sessions. And I tell you, we say often, hey, don't give up, right? You need to push through. And so on the fourth session, I had the sensei who works with our kids really work with him on it. And I want to make sure he got it. And so by the end of the session, I saw him jump up 
And he was like, I did it. And I was like, I ran into the room because I was like, is everything okay? He's like, Miss Vivian, I figured it out. And it was like this huge light bulb appeared over his head. And when he left that day and he went and he talked to his dad and dad said, how did things go? He said, you know what, dad? This was the best day ever. And for me, I mean, it's like my heart just opened up because this kid, he realizes, you know what? This may have been hard, but I was able to get through that, right? And so what else in his life that he's not going to give up on just because it got too hard and make sure that, that he's able to, to hit anything that he chooses, that he can get it done. And so that's, that's some of the stuff that we love at Code Ninja. That is probably the most valuable piece of the Code Ninja, you know, experience for those kids is that they get themselves, they get their own wisdom, they get that they have the, they have the ability to, to they have superpowers, they really do, if they yeah. work on them. So thank you for that's great. So Dominique, tell us about who you work, work with, with and what you do with them specifically. And then I'd love to hear a story about how you help someone. Yeah, so we mostly work with multifaceted entrepreneurs and people who are personal brands or corporate brands. And on the small business side and mid business side, we do a lot of training with corporate teams um, that we lead with our uh, dynamic creator process and our dynamic method, which is really unique and significant to our company here at Dynamic Endeavors. And so we lead them on a really interesting journey uh, as it relates to their visual brand and designing what that overall look of their company is going to look like. And especially for entrepreneurs who are rebranding, they're in a new phase of their business. They're in a new space of elevation. And they're like, they always come to me and they say, we want more. We want to do something different. We're, we're in a different space. It's this, 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 um, a moment that they're always awakening into, I guess you can say. And I love seeing them through the journey uh, and working with them in that way. Me and my team, we get a kick out of it. It's like, we're going to do it again, team. Let's go. <laughs> That's great. It's awesome to have, to see, just like Vivian was saying, to see those people. And Celeste, you're seeing when the women transform. So you're really helping people from the business level to the personal level to the student level. Um, really trans have their transformation moments so they can stand up and stand out um any how did you get into this uh, dominique by the way oh it's really unique so i actually have a ba in advertising from temple university go owls and <laughs> i then went on to you know start my corporate career and that's the world that i knew that's the world that i'm trained for um that's the world that i eat breathe and sleep right but it was until maybe about 2013 2014 i caught that entrepreneurial bug i always knew i was going to do it i was i had this grand vision of my life i'm like yes i'm going to be creative director and i'm going <laughs> and i'm going to get all of these awards and then i'm going to start my business and life had it where it's just like mm, yeah i remember that vision you had for like 20 years from now you're starting it today and that is when it really kicked in and and one thing that really transformed us into um, what we're doing now and how my agency has grown since then um, with my new team and our creative team and everything of that nature is I started to see how our entrepreneurs were lacking that big corporate access that I knew, right? I'm coming from digital agencies, corporate uh, advertising agencies, print, web, uh, apps, all of that kind of stuff. And entrepreneurs, they didn't get access to that, right? Because we're talking about million dollar campaigns where entrepreneurs are, some are trying to piece together their first 10,000 or their first 50,000 or their first six figures. And how can we create a world where they can get that level of expertise, that level of design and high-end design without breaking their bank and accelerating their endeavors moving forward. So when I noticed that we can become that glue for them, everything just really just started to explode and, and expand. And I love, 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 love seeing that journey for them. 
Isn't that great when you're in alignment? And we've all talked about being in alignment in one way or another. And here at Women Speakers Association, we like to align together to support each other to bring out our messages and help more people. So I was wondering if each of you could answer um, one last question for me today about what is the value that you personally or professionally have gained from being a part of Women Speakers Association? Celeste, would you like to share? Yeah, this is probably one of the best things that I've ever done is joining this amazing group. I have met so many people and I've gotten such great advice, suggestions, just uh, sometimes a sounding board and just, you know, this idea that I can reach out and get feedback and all so much is accessible to me. And to have a library that is set up, I can go and, and watch videos. I can read articles. I can you know, realize that, okay, I'm, I'm not alone in this. And it's a wonderful feeling to know that there is so much support built in because networking isn't always easy. And I'm not always finding the people that I really need to connect with. And here it is, I have this whole group and everybody brings something so wonderful to the table and just listening to uh, Vivian and Dominique I'm just thinking oh this is so wonderful that I've made two great new connections and I'm looking forward to speaking with them later it's uh, very exciting yes <laughs> it is exciting and we're excited to have you here and thank you for for sharing that and Vivian how about you I know you've been involved in a few things with Women Speakers Association so I got to say, Women Speakers Association for me has truly been a game changer because there's been so many things that I've been able to get out of this. Uh, first, just bringing light to the importance of girls in STEM has been huge. And, you know, that happened through the Women Speakers Association, as well as creating a channel for women to connect and collaborate through the Global Business Connector opportunity. And I'm a global business connector for the Atlanta metro area. Um, and then really helping me sort of refine my message to customers, which is big. And then I was able to write my first book through, you know, Women Speakers Association. I mean, how, how many places can you go to and get all of that done? And, and last but surely not least is the network. I mean, there are unbelievable women in Women Speakers Association from all over the world. And I have made some great connections, people who can help you in your business, just sometimes someone to talk to. You know, we are in the middle of a pandemic and sometimes you can feel like you're alone. And so having a network of fabulous, smart women is, is priceless. Thank you. In fact, yeah, there's pr practically at least one uh, Zoom type of networking opportunity or training opportunity you can attend a week through Women Speakers Association. We have the Facebook group. Like Celeste, you said, we have trainings in a library. We have resources and articles. And you get email every week to let you know what's happening, what's available for you. And then, of course, you can you can pick and choose who you talk to from the Facebook group, from our um, member area and you get listed as a speaker so yeah there's all those things so Dominique what do you love about Women Speakers Association? Oh, there is a lot but I'll keep it to a few so my first one is definitely the training library I think that's really awesome because it gives you a chance to see that not only do you have amazing speaker sisters in a way but also that especially a space where they're willing to share their own knowledge with you and you can always go back to it over and over again I think that's really important for us to be fortified as speakers and so I really love that aspect about um, the training library but also it's, you know, what am I missing? How can I, what areas of, of expansion am I missing out on? So for example, WSA TV, this, this is a chance for me to reach out and people for the people to understand who I am and for me to share my expertise as well. So I always value that. And that leads into my last thing that I'm really, really excited about being a member of WSA finally. <laughs> is being able to be a resource to other speakers, right? So to other speakers who are members as well and having that space to build and grow together, that's really valuable for me, especially as a creative. And now, especially um, as a speaker, couple those two together. I mean, it's like, oh, 
amazing. <laughs> right. And so having that space to grow and also be a, being able to be yet again, a resource to other women and other speakers is just always really valuable. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity. And we are grateful for you and for all of you. And thank you, Celeste and Vivian and Dominique for being here today to share generously of your wisdom to be that resource. And for those of you who'd like to join WSA or find out more about it, go to joinwsa.com. And if you're interested in publishing, you can go to voicesofthe21stcentury.com. We have a collaborative book. We have a waiting list going on for that, for the next book and or WSA publishing if you have your own book and we can help you get published. So there's many more resources beyond that, but that's all we have time for today. Please just start exploring our website. Thank you again, ladies. We will be back next week with another edition of Women's Speakers Association's WSA TV Women's Premier Show with Michaela Quilici, who's going to be talking about her training that's coming up in October. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye.